Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophistic Cakes. For this tutorial, I had a go at a cake I've been wanting to try. It's a candied pear cake with gold accents. If you want to see how I did this cake, keep watching and we'll start right after the intro. So you need to pick some pears that are slightly underripe and have a thicker skin on them and cut them into, slice them into about an eighth of an inch to quarter inch slices. Now you're going to have to waste some of the pears because you want the pear shape. So these first pieces on the sides are not going to actually look real good on the cake. And if you do use those pieces, use those towards the back. Um, I think these were Bosch pears that I got, but just make sure that it's a firmer pear. And to candy these pears, or any other fruit, but for this cake we're doing pears, you start with a simple syrup mixture, which is one part water to one part granulated sugar. And those were the colors that I used. I did a red, an orange, and a yellow. And the first thing you need to do is to boil the simple syrup till the grains of sugar are dissolved. And once that happens, then you can add your color and your pears. You need to make sure that all of the pears are submerged in the water mixture, the simple syrup. Now I let these go ahead and simmer for five minutes per side. And I did the same thing with each color. And once they have cooked long enough and they're slightly translucent and flexible like these are, you can take them off the heat and let them sit in that simple syrup for a good, oh, hour. I would say a good hour to really soak up the color. So 10 minutes simmering and then an hour off of the heat. And once they have sat for about an hour, go ahead and transfer them onto parchment paper on a cookie sheet. And you're going to want to preheat your oven to 200 to 220 degrees. And once it's preheated, go ahead and put the sheet in the oven and bake them for two hours. I think I did two hours. Just make sure that these are not touching each other on the tray because they're really sticky at this point because they're wet and they just came out of sugar syrup. Now go ahead, and this is what they look like before. They're a little shiny, well, quite a bit shiny, actually. And after they are done baking, they will look like this. A little bit drier, but not crunchy. They're still somewhat flexible. And then transfer them onto a wire rack. And what I actually did is I covered them with some saran wrap and left them overnight. I loosely covered them with saran wrap and left them overnight, just so that they dried out a little bit more. I think these are so pretty. They remind me of stained glass. Now we need to get our cake prepared. I had three layers of six inch cake, an eight inch expandable cake ring, and my acetate sheets. I need to put this cake ring about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch away from your cake board on the bottom so that you have room for your buttercream around it. Now I use my acetate sheets, I cut it to size so it had a little bit of overlap and I nestled that inside of the cake ring and secured it with a little piece of tape. Now put a little buttercream on the cake board and put your first layer down to the bottom making sure that you have even space around that cake. And then I used a piping bag with a smaller hole, about a mm, quarter of an inch hole, cut in the bag with my buttercream. Now this buttercream is a little thinned down so that it can try to squeeze it down to the bottom. And I'm trying to sneak it in between the cake and the acetate sheet. Now what I'm trying to accomplish here, actually I should tell you that I filled it in with a little buttercream for your filling and then put the next layer of cake on top of it push it down to squeeze out any air bubbles because you cannot put your offset spatula down there to level out that layer of filling now just keep doing this all the way up 
till you get to your top layer, making sure to squeeze or push down that layer each time. And this angle shows you what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to fill it in. And I know that you're not gonna get complete coverage in there, but what this is going to do is it's gonna give you level sides and potentially make your job a little easier. And I just went ahead and filled in the top, set it in the freezer for 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes to get this nice and firm. Now loosen up your cake ring and gently remove your acetate sheet. Now you can see that there are gaps and that's not a problem because you'll just go back in with that piping bag with buttercream and fill in any holes or gaps. And once you've got those filled in, use your scraper to level it out and remove the excess. Now you don't have to worry so much about this being perfect because it's going to be covered with those uh, pear slices. And I just used my X-Acto knife and removed that outside ring from the top. Since it's firm from the freezer, you can just cut it off and remove it. And I think the trick here is just like when you are put it, or smoothing out your buttercream on top of the cake, like I have said in past videos, tuck your elbow in and keep your hand still and move the cake on your turntable. Let the, let the turntable do the work for you. I'm just going ahead and leveling everything out and smoothing out that top. I did another layer of buttercream on the top after that, and I'm using my spatula to create a texture on the top, a swirl texture. Start in the middle and move your way out. Put it back in the freezer for another 10 minutes to make sure that it's firm. Now these pieces of pear I am attaching, I actually used a little buttercream behind each one. And I am laying them one on top of the other, all the way around. And I wanted them raised up above the lip of, or the top of the cake a little bit, just for a little dramatic effect. And start at the top, not the bottom, because you want to layer it starting from the top down. And the next layer, I put the pears, the orange pears, in between the ones on the top. And do that with your red also all the way down to the bottom. And you can set this in the refrigerator or the freezer to firm up in between. Now I used these candies with some gold luster dust to create some gold balls. This is a super easy technique. Chocolate likes to just keep the gold on it. It just, they like each other. They, they're very attracted to each other. <laughs> just put the dust in the bag with your chocolates, shake it around, and that gold will stick to the chocolate. And then remove them from the bag and just get rid of the extra gold. You don't need to hold on to that because it's, you know, now been a, on chocolate. And the same goes for, for fruit with the skin in particular. That luster dust likes to just, all you have to do is brush it on with a fluffy brush and it sticks. Now it will come off on your fingers if you rub it, but just try not to rub it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple, right? And for the bottom, I used my extra pairs and I cut them in half so that you wouldn't have the bottom layer overlapping the one on top of it too much. You want to kind of keep it even all the way down. And I just used a little buttercream behind these chocolate balls and put those in between. And use a little dollop of buttercream on the top to get your pear to stick and to stay in place. And I did the same for the other one and I wanted to kind of lay it over a little bit for another dramatic effect. And I just used some more of the gold balls on there. And then for the candied pears, I'm adding gold on that also. For this cake, I did not need to use any vodka or Everclear. Everything that I used the gold on just stuck. And since the pears are a little sticky because they're candied, it worked great for that too. And I didn't want to do a lot of gold. I just kind of wanted to put a little touch on the edges all the way around. So there you have it, guys, my candied pear cake with gold accents. Let me know if you like what you saw. Like, subscribe, share, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys.